This is part two on how to build a camper home theater. So uh, you'll need to watch part one because in part one I go over the products, the features of the products, what comes with them, how to build uh, the ceiling mount, so the supplies you'll need, the screen, the material you'll need to build the screen, and the brackets, the cables, the wiring, and how to put the ceiling mount up. So you'll need to see part one of that. There'll be a card in the upper right hand corner. You can click on that or down low in the description you'll have uh, a link there to the video for part one. So let's pick up where we left off. So I've closed off my curtain. I've darkened it out in here. I've put up the full size board and so we'll turn off the light. And there is our picture and it looks like it's going to be able to fill up the entire back. It is upside down, but I'll fix that later in the settings menu. But now, if you notice, and I don't know if you can see, but you can still see the lines in the plastic. So I thought I could get away with just using the vinyl as a background, but I don't because it makes all those lines. So that line, those lines that you're seeing in the image are from the actual corrugated. So we've got to cover it with a better material. And uh, the focus knob on these are a little fidgety when you change directions. You have to roll it some extra before it catches up. So you kind of have to go past where you want to focus and then you have to back it up. I'm really excited because that is a big screen. I think that is a, yeah, that's a 36 inch um, across side to side and usually it's measured diagonally. So that's probably like about a 40 inch screen right there inside this. So this is cool. I am loving it. So what I've done is I have covered the hook in duct tape and I'm going to cram this in and bend this over to the point where I'm going to leave this in all the time. I decided on the black. I think it's going to look a lot better while you're doing your movie. You won't see all these. And of course you could also paint this and make this look a whole lot better. So I did the same thing to my brackets here. Covered them in black tape. Now a note about this. This is an inexpensive projector so you've got to be careful. One viewer had this happen. These little fittings here these little ports here are only soldered onto the circuit board so they're not attached to the case so what happens is if it keeps getting moved and moved and moved those solder joints are going to become disconnected so this is my power cord here i've zip tied it along here and then i'll have to hook that up to a usb extension cable going into the higher output usb port and then i've also taken my little hdmi mini hdmi to regular HDMI and I have zip tied that there and I will leave that like that so that as it's traveling and as it gets shaken and all. Now when I'm, put, when I'm storing it, it's still going to be just fine because I can unplug this, I can unplug this and then this will just spin off and so I can store that in a box or somewhere protected and then this will be stored somewhere in a drawer or storage just like this ready for next time. So I'm real happy with how that turned out. I think it's got a good look to it. So I'll leave this rod here, take this down. I've run a USB extension cord over here and run that into the side and the back. And as you can see, the red light's on. So it is charging and receiving power. I wanted to give you a little size perspective because I noticed I'm always so up close. So here's the inside of the Rover. Give you some sense of scale. There's the size of the screen and we come around here and there's the projector. Little teeny, teeny thing. And this has been one of the funnest projects I think I've ever done. I actually had to stop and watch a movie. Even though I don't have the screen done, I was having such a great time. I stopped and watched some Netflix. So there's some of the complaints that I saw online were because of the mistake right here and they put this big card in here. So what happens is, is how much power that it needs. So if you're only going to charge it, you can use a standard USB outlet here, less than 2.4 amps. But if you want to actually use the unit and not have it die on you and can keep having power, then you have to have something greater than 2.5 amps um, USB. Now, if you want, they also sell separately a 110 plug. So I'll put a link in my website, but this is one of them. This is actually a three outlet plug, but it is rated for a total of 7.2 amps. Um, so I believe this one's like a three, this one's a two, and this one's a one, something like that. It, it doesn't have it printed on there, but I'll show you, I'll give you some links and options where you can do that. So this is important. So if you're having it just shut down on you, you're watching it and it just shuts down, and it's plugged in, 
Yeah, uh, it's one of two problems. One, you've got it on high projector. You need to put it on standard or eco mode, and you have to have a USB outlet that's putting out at least two and a half amps through that single USB plug. What I've done is laid out two yards of the fabric that I bought, and then I sized down my screen, and I just cut enough to where I'll have some room. I've got this laid out on my table. I went ahead and marked the corners like AA. BB so when you take it off you'll know how to put it back on so I've got I've cut a bunch of these velcro strips I'm not a big fan of the sticky stuff. I usually just get a roll and glue it Okay, so what I did is I peeled off the sticky part on the bottom and Then glued hot glued on the sticky part to the material Then I've peeled off the clear part here which leaves this sticky, but I don't think I'll have to glue it to there It should stick I've just cut a, just a little bit of the corner off and put some duct tape on here because I'm going to put quite a bit of pressure on here and I don't want it to wear a hole through. So my idea is I'm going to fold this over and do the corners first and then stretch it as hard as I can and then I'll start going around and doing the sides. So for the first one I've pulled off it so I can just pull this like this and just press that down. And then I'm going to go to each corner and do the same thing and put as much stress without ripping it as I can. Now that I got my four corners done, I'm going to start in the middle here. Pull this over like that. And then I'm going to work on the opposite side. Pull this tight. Pull it over and press. Same on these corners now. On this side, pull it tight. Over here, pull this one tight. And then I'll just tuck all the other, or stick all the other ones down. Here's my mounting system. So I took one of these brackets, I actually took the smaller one, and it ended up bending it like a Z. So bent it in one hole and then bent it in the other hole. So this is what I ended up with here. And then I tucked it in to the trim piece here. All right, so I made my mounting bracket. So here was the before. And then what I did was this is the after. So it's bent like this, and I'll probably have to bend it some more to get it to fit right. Now I've marked which side is up, and so there's an A and a B, so I'll know where to put them and which way is up. On the bottom side, I put extra tape since it might be somewhere where it might be near glass. And then on the top part, I have glued a big piece of Velcro there, and then I'll peel this off when I'm ready to do the final mount, and then this piece here will stick to the back of the screen on the vinyl. So these brackets are really difficult to see uh, because the black on the black looks great. So what I did is I took a little piece of white tape so that's the A bracket, and there is the sides of it. So if I ever do take the bracket out, which I'm not planning on, but if I ever take it out and put that in storage, then I'll know which bracket goes where. And so I've, I pulled off the sticky on the, the covering or the plastic off of this. And so now I'm just going to take and hold up my screen just where I want it. And then I'm going to stick it in place. And I'll show you what that looks like. So there is our finished product looks great show you the back side so here's what it looks with the gate open so the lift gate can open so when you first turn on the projector what you'll want to do is go to settings and so it's upside down here and in settings you'll just go here onto projector and then i think you hit the up arrow once twice three times four times there we go so now you've got that set up and then the next thing you want to do is bump down the power mode that's going to allow it to keep running. So go up here. I found eco mode is just as good. Take down the bright. Oh, sorry. Go down here. We're going to take it down to standard and eco. So it's very little difference, but it saves a lot of power. And then that fan gets whisper quiet. So then when you're ready to play, um, when you're ready to play a video, you can play it off the card or you can just change the input. So I'm going to exit out of this and I'm going to hit the input button. And there you can choose your digital input, which was if you're going to hook up with your phone. So real quick here, let's go over the settings I ended up with. I've been playing with this a lot. I'm not 100%, but out of the box, the colors are not very good. When you first turn it on, you'll see this is the screen that you'll see. What you want to do is hit the back arrow if you want to watch a video or pictures. You can go over here. And then you can navigate over to photos. Click on that. 
I put some pictures and uh, some video shots here on the micro SD card and here I can see any pictures and you'll only see the pictures also you can change the volume with the remote up and down so let's go look at a picture here like pretty good detail real pleased with the picture that's a really nice picture all right so let's go back now we'll go back several steps go back one more you got to go all the way to the top and then you can pick your videos and I've got the Jumanji trailer right here and I'll put that up One thing I did run into when I was loading the movie, and I actually downloaded that trailer in 720p. I don't, I really didn't see much difference between that and the higher resolution one I had tried before. But um, I had trouble with the MP4 format, so I had to download a free app. And when I converted it to MOV, it did great. Um, I don't know what are the formats. It's supposed to handle quite a few formats, but it may not see um, take care of all of them. So you may have to do some conversion. So I really enjoyed doing this video. This was so much fun and this project was so amazing. I'm really excited about this thing. And I just want to thank you for joining me and for coming along for the ride. And this has been wonderful. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And I will catch you with the next fun project. So until next time, I'm going to watch some movies and I'm going to have some fun with this.